Hi guys, so here's another lecture for our managerial economics class. We are going to discuss module 4. Okay, so elasticity of demand. I have already uploaded the written lecture. Okay, so medyo mahaba yung lecture niya kasi included doon yung paano com computein yung mga pinapacompute. Okay, so anyway, I'll, we have two parts. I'll first discuss the theories, and then for the second part, I'll discuss the computation. Okay, so I'll be uploading guided exercises. Okay, upload ko din siya sa YouTube channel. Hopefully, makita ang platform kung paano mag-upload ng documents. Okay, anyway, I'll share it with you guys since we have viewers from uh, different schools. Okay, so this is my way of helping you guys to become CPAs. Kasi knowing that revised na yung, yung syllabus or the table, uh, oo nga, syllabus, ng, uh, syllabus and curriculum of the BS Accountancy Program, dati nung panahon namin, ang economics namin is only micro and macro. Ngayon ay managerial economics, that's Econ 1, and then the second is economic development, that's Econ 2. Okay, that's actually level up ng micro and macro okay so anyway if you're hearing background background music if you're hearing background noise magpasensya nyo na okay so kasi may mga aso may mga batang nagsilabasan dito sa amin electric fan okay anyway so this is my everyday look yam nyo na iba sa mahalaga na natututo kayo sa akin okay so elasticity of demand we have first the first part concepts and theories okay so, elasticity, learning outcomes. <laughs> Hindi ko napaltan. Yan yun na. <laughs> okay, so the learning outcomes first is you have um, at the end of this lesson, I hope you can define and describe elasticity. Then, describe the different classifications of, of elasticity. The third one is for you to compute elasticity, price elasticity, Point elasticity, arc elasticity, then apply it to price elas <coughs> price elasticity, income elasticity, and cross cross product or co cross price elasticity. Okay. Then the fourth one is actually applying all of this concept in the managerial decision making. Okay. So yon yun yung upgrade niya. Okay. Kasi up to number three, you'll just be applying. Um, microeconomics okay number four is where you put in managerial economics okay so masyado akong wash out kasi nasa harapan ako na ng uh, tawag din eh bintana okay ganyan yung setup ng kwart yan yun na okay so elasticity we have elasticity is the measure of responsiveness ng ano of the consumers when you do changes in factors affecting demand. So, for example, you, ikaw yung manager, the company without your, uh, without your prior knowledge, nag-decide ang top management na mag-increase ng price. Bigla na lang, nagulat ka kasi nung inaayos mo yung uh, report on revenues, report on profit, bigla na lang bumaba yung sales, bumaba yung net profit from first quarter to second quarter to third quarter to fourth quarter. As a manager, nakita mo na ang isang dahilan ng pagbaba is yung ginawang price change ng top management. So, with that said and done, ibig sabihin, hindi na pag-aralan ni top management yung elasticity ng products or services na meron kayo. As a manager, especially if you are engaged in nasa department ka ng sales or nasa involved ka when it comes to um, managerial decision making, okay, or you're applying ma managerial accounting, okay, actually, managerial economics is part of managerial accounting, okay? Kasi ito is parang consultancy, managerial advisory services. Okay, you put this into consideration. Okay, so as a manager, sabi mo kay boss, kasi po, uh, boss, yung atin po kasing product is actually an elastic good. Ibig sabihin, yung consumer nyo, ang response niya, pag tinaasan mo yung presyo, yung level, yung level mo as a product is 
ay okay from from 10 pesos naging 50 pesos na lang hindi na lang ako bibili wag na lang hindi ka naman masyadong kailangan or makakahanap naman ako ng iba ganun yung level ng product when where you are an elastic good okay so hindi alam ni top management biglang nag price change hindi man lang pinag-aralan the consequences is the consumers will bababa yung demand niya uh, hindi na kayang i-purchase ni consumer or ayaw na hindi isa hindi kaya kundi ayaw na so bumaba yung demand mababa tuloy ang revenues ng company so if you don't know the concept of elasticity masyadong devastating yung kanyang effect so if you know and you, if you know how to apply elasticity concept in decision making maraming pwedeng mangyari sa company mo and one of it is increase in sales and increase in revenues okay so let's start with how to do that okay so measure of responsiveness okay it is the ratio of the percentage change with in one variable to the person change in another value variable so lahat na ito kasi ang nilagay natin ang ating topic is, is elasticity of demand lahat ng factors affecting demand siya yung pinag-aaralan dito change in one factor versus a change in another factor anong mangyayari sa elasticity hindi lang po ito tungkol sa price okay so yun the key thing to understand is that we use elasticity when we want to see how one thing changes when we change something else. So, ito nga, paano kapag binago ko yung isang aspeto ng aking product or aking service or ng mismong company ko, what will happen, what will be the response of my consumers? Okay? So, yun yun. Ganun siya. Okay? It's either ayaw na nilang bilhin or mas lalo nilang bibilhin or uh, bibilhin pa rin nila. Okay? So, ganun. Ganun lang. Ang walang pinagbago. Next, we have elasticity varies among products because some products may be more essential to the consumer. So, dito papasok yung essential goods, luxury goods, substitutes, and complements. Okay? As a manager, dapat alam mo kung saan ka pumapatak sa, sa mga ganong classifications. Hindi ibig sabihin na um, uh, maganda yung product mo, essential good ka na. You have to accept the fact na baka you are part of the luxury goods, okay? Knowing and accepting that fact na nandun ka sa classification na yun, maraming pwedeng, uh, maraming benefits in accepting that you are a luxury good. So, sabi mo, okay, so hanggang dito lang ako, magagawa ako, luxury good lang naman ako eh. Okay, pwede ka naman mag-shift, mag-diversify, okay? So, if you're hearing my dog, please... Uh, Sorry. <laughs> okay, anyway, elasticities are often used in demand analysis to measure the effects of changes in demand determining variables. So, so inulit ko lang yun, okay? So, if you're wondering, my microphone is this one. Para hindi niya masagap yung mga uh, noise. Okay, anyway. So, it is also used in production and cost analysis to evaluate the effect of changes in input on output and the effect of output changes on cost. So, ito... Ang elasticity ginagamit siya sa production and cost analysis. So, ma'am, bakit po production? When say production, yun yung uh, parang uh, function ng isang company wherein they are producing the finished goods. Okay? So, if you know that you're a luxury good, if you know that your product is elastic, or if your product uh, if your product is elastic at nagkaroon ka ng price change due to unavoidable circumstances, alam mo na huwag ka masyadong magproproduce na madami Okay, as a manager, you have to advise the production department na huwag masyado mag-produce na marami. Tingnan muna natin. Let's test the waters. Kung ano reaction ng mga consumers natin. Okay? So, if you are a, a product that is inelastic, kahit madami ka mag-produce everyday. Okay? Mamaya tayo dun sa part na yun. Okay? Cost analysis, ganun din. Okay? When you are, ito sa cost accounting yung sunod. Kasi I know that managerial economics is uh, pang first year. Kung hindi pang first year, pang second year. So, parang intro to sa cost accounting eh. So, in cost analysis, you're determining if um, masyadong ba madami yung cost na inilalagay ko sa aking um, sa aking product or dapat na limit ako kasi alam kong ako ay elastic good. Kasi baka yung response ng mga ng mga consumer ko biglang biglang nagbago eh. Okay? So parang ganoon. 
Okay, next we have the equation for calculating elasticity is percentage change in y, this one variable n, second is percentage change in x. Okay, so pwede siyang price and income, pwede siyang um, advertisement expense, income, pwede namang, di mga ganun, yung lahat ng factors affecting demand, pwede mo siyang pag-aralan, pwede yung isang numerator, pwede yung isang denominator, tapos sa kabilang, Pag analysis mo, pwede yung dati mong denominator, ginawa mong numerator. Okay, so mga ganun. So, X and Y symbolizes the factors or determinants affecting demand and ilan pala? Factors. Okay, so we have endogenous endogenous variables. So, ano po yun? Yun ay uh, factors that are within the control of the firm. Ano po yun? We have the price. We have the product quality. We have advertising. Okay, bakit within the control? Kaya baguhin ng company, kaya improve, enhance, tanggalin, okay, yung mga ganun. Endogenous ang tawag doon. Uh, exogenous variables are those that are outside the control of the firm. Ito yung kinatatakutan ng mga firms kasi baka biglang pack COVID-19. Kontrolado? Hindi. Okay, so... Examples are competitors' prices. So, hindi mako-control ni Jollibee ang price ni McDo. Okay, that's competitors' prices. And the weather and other fortuitous events and yun, force majeure. Okay, so yun. Next, elasticity. We have still concept. Contribution of the concept of elasticity lies in the fact that it not only tells us that consumers demand response to price changes, but also the degree of responsiveness. Okay? So, hindi lang yung gaano. Okay? Uh, hindi lang yung gaano kalaki yung pagbabago, kundi yung gaano kagrabe. Okay? Gaano kagrabe yung naging respon response ng consumers sa consumer sa sa price change mo or other changes uh, within your control. Okay? Pag masyadong grabe, okay, mamaya na nga tayo dun kasi parang uh, out of context. <laughs> okay? So, so, elasticity of demand is important primarily as an indicator of how total revenue changes. Okay? So, dito, when you're studying elasticity, you're also studying uh, the changes in your revenue sa company. Okay? Changes in revenues. Kasi, uh, when a change in price induces changes in quantity along the demand curve. Okay? So, iingatan mo dito yung revenues mo. If your target for next quarter is higher sales, huwag kang magpra-price change if kita mong pata pat pataas na yung trend. Mo. Kasi, when you do price changes, it's either pababa or pataas, mag induce siya ng response eh. It's either spike pataas or spike pababa or gradual pataas or gradual pababa. Okay? Hindi lang kasi, uh, hindi ko sinasabing ang decrease in prices mo of goods ay maganda. Okay? There are times that decreases in prices are harmful to the company. Okay? And not all increases in prices are harmful to the company. There are some increases in uh, increase in prices of products that are okay lang, kumbaga uh, hindi siya harmful, maganda nga ang response ng consumers, kasi kaya pala nag-increase ng price, gumanda yung quality yung mga ganun, okay? So, yan. Next, yan, dyan na tayo, classification of elasticity. So, first we have perfectly inelastic okay, dito may perfect ha? perfectly inelastic so, inelastic demand curve Unitary elastic demand curve, elastic demand curve, and perfectly elastic demand curve. Okay? So, yung elastic at inelastic, ang tawag din sa kanya is relatively inelastic at relatively elastic. Okay? So, first we have perfectly inelastic. So, mama ano po yung inelastic? Okay? So, Ang um, perfectly inelastic good is changes when you change a price ng goods or services mo, yung quantity demanded, hindi siya umiibo, hindi siya gumagalaw. Nandun lang siya, okay? So, ibig sabihin, pag tinaasa mo yung price mo, nagtataka ka, bakit hindi gumagalaw yung aking 
quantity demanded, bakit hindi siya nag increase hindi din naman siya nag-decrease. Nandun lang siya, kahit taas ako siya ng taasan. Ang tawag sa iyo, perfectly inelastic good or services. Okay? So, demand curves imply that when this demand curve implies that when price decreases, the total revenue decreases and vice versa. So, dito ang titingnan nyo is revenues. Okay? So, ibig sabihin dito, kapag you are a perfectly inelastic good, pag tinaasan mo yung price, tataas ang revenues mo. Okay? Pag binabaan mo yung iyong price, bababa ang iyong revenues. Yun yung pag ikaw ay perfectly inelastic good. Inelastic, ha? Okay? Anong itsura ng demand curve niya? It's just a vertical line. Okay? So, kung mapapansin nyo, dun sa, sa ating uh, graph, kahit taasan mo yung presyo from $5, so dollars, ha? from $5, ginawa mong $10, nag bang quantity demanded? No, it's just $50. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, hanggang dyan lang siya. Okay? Kahit taasan mong presyo, pag tinaasan mong presyo mo, tataasan yung revenues. Pag binabaan mo, bababa ang yung revenues. Ganun lang. Okay? Next, when you compute, so ito sa sunod, sa sunod natin discussion, when you compute for perfectly inelastic goods, ang lalabas dapat sa iyong uh, efficiency, uh, sorry, elasticity coefficient is zero. Okay? Your elasticity coefficient should be zero. So ano pa ma'am yung elasticity coefficient? That's the number describing the elasticity of the demand curve. Okay, hindi lang through graphs mo may express yan. You can also express it, express it in numerical. Kaya magkocompute tayo sa next nating uh, video. Okay, so that's what I do. Ah. Ayaw kong pinipressure na curious tapos biglang uh, computation agad. Kapag kita kong theories can stand by itself tapos pwede kong ihiwalay muna yung computation. Ginagawa ko. Pero kapag kita kong yung theories ay mas maiintindihan sa compu with computation agad, sinasama ko na. Okay? So, uh, I think naman naiintindihan nyo kahit wala pa siyang computation. Okay? Next. Perfectly elastic. So, ito, kabaliktara ng perfectly inelastic. When you change the prices of your goods and services, the quantity demanded response. Okay? Infinitely or unendingly. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, konti lang, konti lang galaw, biglang, the next day, bumaba, ah, uh, the next, ah, uh, sorry, the next day, tumaas, the next day, bumaba, the next day, tumaas, tumaas na, tumaas na, tumaas na, tumaas na, tumaas. Maganda yon. Pero paano kapag bumaba na, bumaba na, bumaba na, bumaba na, bumaba? Okay? So, ganun siya. This perfectly elastic demand curves have a property that when Price decreases, total revenue increases. So, ito baliktad. Yung kanina, direct ang relationship ng price sa revenue. Here, price and revenues are inverse or indirect. Okay? Pag tinaasan mo ang price, ang price mo, and you're a perfectly elastic good, mag-assume ka na na bababa ang revenues mo. Why? Kasi... Ang response ng mga consumer sa iyo is, "Why? Tumaas yung rev yung presyo ni ganto. Alam ko kung bibili. Buhay pa naman ako kahit walang yan. Tubig na lang. Ganon. Okay? So ganon ka. So pag tinaasan mo, malamang ko konting bibili bababa ang revenues mo. Pero pag bigla mong ibinaba yung prices mo and you're a perfectly elastic good, expect that your revenues will be higher. Ganon siya. Okay? So, ganito yung tsura ha, ng perfectly elastic good. So, you see, at $10, okay, $10 ha, $10, you see that at point, itong point na to, at point ganito, 50, okay, 50 yung quantity demanded. Tingnan nyo to, uh, let's say for example dito, at point ganito, Bigla na lang yung quantity demanded niya. Hindi na siya 50, ha? Siguro ito, 50, 60, 70. Kung mara, 70 siya. Okay? At $10, 70 quantity demanded. O kaya naman, at this point, 
at $10, bigla na lang siyang bumagsak ng 10 quantity demanded. Okay? Ganyan po ang response when you are perfectly elastic. Kahit hindi mo binabago ang price mo, or bigla mong binago ang price mo, expect that it is changing infinitely or unendingly. Walang constant. Okay. Anyway, so, ano po ang elasticity coefficient niya when we compute? So, ang lalabas po is mat error. <laughs> okay, is infinity. Okay, infinity. Okay? Ang, when you compute it in the calculator, it's mat error ang lalabas. If I remember it correct. Oh, yeah. Math error. Okay? Dati kasi nung nagpa-exam ako, ang nilagay ng student ko, uy, judge or charing. Ang nilagay ng student ko is math error. Okay lang. Uh, siguro, yung two points, ginawa ko 1.5. Kasi, tama din naman na math error. Okay? Kasi, ang hinahanap ko sa good ay infinity. Okay? So, yan. Unitary demand curve. So, ito naman, so, you have perfect inelastic, perfect elastic, and unitary. So, this one is the property that when price increases or decreases, total revenues remain constant. So, ang titingnan mo is revenues. Okay? So, pag ganyan, total revenues remain constant, ibig sabihin kahit taasan mo, babaan mo, walang magbabago sa revenues mo. Bakit? Unitary. Okay? The elasticity coefficient for such demand curves is equal to 1. So, pag pack 1, 1 agad ang sagot, alam nyo na, huwag na kang mag unitary demand curve yan. Okay? Ano pong itsura ng unitary demand curve? Okay, it's actually sloping downwards because it's a demand curve. Demand curve ha, demand curve, sloping downwards. Uy, mga nagkamali sa aking, ano, uh, learn test number 1. Okay, tama yung direction, mali yung drawing. Okay? So, Downward sloping kasi demand curve siya, sloping downwards. Okay? Unitary. Ibig sabihin, constant pa rin yung revenues mo. Kahit increase mo siya or decrease mo siya. Wala lang. Kung bagang tao eh, okay, bibili ko tong ngayon. Ah, next week, mag na muna. Okay, next week, bili tayong dalawa kasi hindi bumila last week. Ganon. Ano? Kung kayong judger, ganyan kayo. <laughs> okay? Ganyan kayo when you're buying something. Hindi nyo lang pansin. Mare, nag-milty kayo ngayon. Ah, oh, milty. Nag-milty kayo ngayon. Tapos, the next, next week, ayaw nyo na. Tapos, dahil na-miss nyo mag-milty, the following week, bumili ka ng dalawa. Okay? So, parang ganun. Wala din. Parang, bumili ka na din that week. Gain more fats. Char. Okay? Relatively inelastic demand curve. So, relatively in elastic demand curve, you have demand curves which have an elasticity coefficient of between 0 and 1. Okay? Are called relatively inelastic or simply inelastic. Okay? So, ito, um, when the price falls, the quantity demand expands, but total revenue still decreases. So, uh, ang good mo is relatively inelastic if kahit binago mo yung price, Gumalaw naman yung quantity demanded, pero maliit lang. Ganun siya. Maliit lang yung naging response. Kumbaga eh, ay sige, bibili pa rin ako, pero sa halip na 1 kilo, gawin ko na lang 500 grams. Ganun. Okay, so ganun siya. Kids. So ano po itsura ng kanyang demand curve? Are, ano ha, relatively inelastic. So yan, ganyan yung itsura niya. Medyo steep. Pero hindi ganun ka-steep. Okay? Again, this is, don't, don't mind this. This is relatively inelastic demand curve. Uh, this is medyo steep, pero not too steep. Basta steep. Okay? Ganun. Kasi sabi nga, uh, price change, tanya from 5, from 5 ah, from 5, at point here, 50. Ah, hindi mo na. By 10, so, 10. 10 dati, 10 dati, binabaan mo ng 5. Nung 10, 50 ang bumibili. Nung binabaan mo ng 5, naging 70. Hindi ganun ka-drastic. Ano, parang, uy, biglang bumaba yun. Tara, bili. Ganun. Okay? Next, you have relatively elastic demand curve. So, this one, demand curves which have an elasticity coefficient between 0 and 1 are called relatively, ah, ah, parang hindi ko to binago. Okay? So, explain ko na lang dito. Huwag kayong tumingin dito. Ang relatively elastic, okay, they range, the efficiency coefficient ranges from 1 
to more than one. Ah, no, sorry. To more than one. Kasi pag one unitary, more than one. Okay? So, yun. Again, relatively elastic demand curves, range, the efficiency coefficient ranges from one to, sorry, to more than one. It's not one, ha? One is unitary. More than one is uh, relatively elastic. Okay, ibig sabihin, pag nagkaroon ka ng price changes, yung response ng tao, medyo malayo ang gap. Ah, medyo, medyo madami, medyo monte, okay? Medyo lang, okay? Medyo lang, okay? Pero, when you compare it to relatively inelastic curves, okay, relatively inelastic goods, yung dami ng umayaw at dami ng gustong bumili is marsyadong madami. Okay? Compared sa relatively inelastic goods. Okay? So, ano yung tura? Ito, ba kanina, relatively inelastic is medyo steep. May medyo patayo. Ito, medyo humihiga na siya. Pero hindi siya higang-higa. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, dati, $10 siya, $50 ang bumibili. Nung ginawa mo $5, biglang ang bumili ay $150. Kanina, nung sa relatively inelastic, nung ginawa mo siyang $5, $70 lang. Dito, $150. So, you can say that this one, this good is relatively elastic. Okay? So, yan. So, we have the summary. So, perfectly inelastic, increases proportionally with price, ang ED value niya is zero, Okay, so this is your guide. So I want to give examples for each. Okay, perfectly inelastic goods. Ang examples niya is the basic goods, the essential goods. Okay, the bigas. Kahit tumaas ang bigas sa Pilipinas, bibili at bibili ka pa rin ng bigas. Tama? Tama. Okay. Uh, perfectly elastic goods, on the other hand, lalakong pinto. Okay? Perfectly elastic goods, on the other hand, are those goods that are considered luxury goods. For example, iced tea. Hindi na magsasabi ang brand na, basta iced tea. Dati 10 pesos lang, biglang naging 20. 17 pesos for a wholesaler. Naging 20. Okay? Sari-sari store 20, 21, 25, 30. Isang sachet, isang litro. Bibili ka pa ba? Huwag na. Kung 30, 30 pesos din naman, bibili na lang ako ng mismo. Sakto. Kaya 1.5. Ganun na rin. Okay? Eh, gusto yung juice. Gusto healthy living. Ka magtutubig na lang. Perfectly inelastic goods. What else? Hermes bags. Um... Yung talagang luxury. Yung mga kotse. Kumari, uh, dati, sabi mo, afford mo bumili ng, uh, afford mo bumili ng, let's say, Vios. Biglang si Vios naging uh, 2M. 2 million. Vios, ha? Vios, ha? Okay? You can search the net if you don't know what Vios. 2 million. Wow, di sabi na bumili na lang Ranger. Okay? Dinagdagan ko na lang para makabili ng ranger. Parang ganun. Okay? So, yan. Uh, what else? Uh, huh? Yan. That's perfectly elastic goods. Relatively inelastic. Nandun pa rin siya sa range ng essential goods, pero hindi siya ganun ka-essential. Okay? For example, um, sabon. Pero dahil maraming brand ang sabon, kung dati bumibili ka ng dab yung siguro mga apat na buhos ng tabo bago ma matanggal sa iyo nag-safeguard ka na lang isang buhosan okay ka na kasi mas mura may merong buy 3 tipid ka ng 13 pesos ganun sa dab 50 pesos 60 pesos para sa mga essential good pero napapalitan okay you some can consider that that example as relatively elastic. Bakit? Depende sa preference. Okay? Some goods are considered essential goods ng iba. Pero some people consider the, essen the essential goods of those na nas elite, elite class. Yung nasa elite class or the rich, the rich and the famous. 
considered nilang essential goods, sometimes those below the elite or not, hindi nga, hindi nga sometimes eh, as in talagang go na go, yung below ng, below ng elite class, okay, the middle class, and then those in the poverty line, and below the poverty line, the essential goods of those above them are considered luxury goods na nila. Okay? So, depende yan sa uh, point of view ng consumers, if they are essential goods. Okay? Pero, as of today, essential goods are categorized as those are food, groceries, uh, yung mga pwedeng mag-deliver nung panahon ng pandemic, yun yung essential goods. Okay? So, yun. Okay? Uh, unitary elastic. So, this one, unaffected by any price changes. Uh, huh, huh, mm -hmm. uh, can you think of one product na kahit bumaba yung product, yung price niya, hindi mo pa rin bibilhin? O kahit tumaas yung price niya, bibilhin mo pa rin? Yun, doon na lang tayo sa kahit bumaba yung price niya, hindi mo pa rin bibilhin. That's unitary. Okay? So, yun. Next, numerical measurement of elasticity. Okay, we have the first one. Ito yung, ito yung ginagamit ko. Kasi there are uh, a lot of ways to compute for elasticity. Pero this one is the most simple. Okay, it's the simplest. Yan, percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. Okay, so ang pinag-uusapan dito is price. So, parang it, this one is actually price elasticity. Okay? So, yun. Expanded one. So, pinal expand ko lang. That's change in quantity demanded. Q1. Your new new quantity demanded. Nung binago mo yung price. Minus mo yung original quantity demanded. Yung bago mo bagoin yung price. Divided by original. All over. P1, that's the new price, minus P0, that's original price, divided by your original price. Ganyan lang. Okay, madali lang siya. Okay, saka na natin computein. Sa so next video na. Demand is elastic if a given percentage changes in price results in larger percentage change in quantity demanded. Makikita mo agad yan. When, um, when you're computing for uh quantity demanded and priced, pag kita mong masyadong malaki yung, yung pinagbago, numerator pa lang, alam mong elastic good na siya. Okay? So, paano mo matetes if tama yung iyong ginagawa? If, because you are still beginners, or, yon idiretsyo nyo na, divide nyo na, and if more than one, more than one yung sagot, okay, masyadong elastic yung good mo. Okay? So, if a given percentage change in price is accompanied by a relatively smaller change, pag medyo maliit yung changes, inelastic. Okay? The borderline case of unitary elasticity which separates elastic and inelastic of course when a percentage change in price is equal to quantity demanded. Kaya nga, 1 ang lumalabas. Okay? The price elasticity of demand measures responsive. Ito yun. Uh, this is one of the factors. I have, I'm discussing it already, the price elasticity, pero may separate discussion siya. Price elasticity, gaano ka-responsive yung customers mo when you change the price? Okay? Doon, mo, doon ang basihan mo ng management decision on optimal pricing policy. Okay? Ibig sabihin, mag-iisip ka if tama ba, natataasan ko yung presyo at magkano yung itataas kong presyo na hindi nakakasakit sa company ko. Okay? Ganun. Mahirap siya. Mahirap siyang gawin. Okay? Point elasticity. This is another. So, yung kanina is the usual elasticity uh, computation. This one is point elasticity. It's, it determines a given point in a function. Okay? Uh, some, yung mas advanced na nag-aaral ng elasticity, gusto nila at certain point, makuha nila na ito, ito, ito. Hanggang dito lang yung kaya ko eh. Okay? They also compute for point elasticity. So, this one is actually used 
for small or marginal changes lang. Okay, like 5% changes in price, 5% changes in advertising expense, 5% change in income, yung maliliit lang. Yun lang ang kaya niyang computing. That's the downside of point elasticity. It is represented by the epsilon. Okay? Uy, epsilon. Yung ganun. Sum, summation. Okay? Symbol siya for... Ah, hindi pala. Basta epsilon. <laughs> okay? I'm sorry, guys. Kung nasa classroom tayo, mas marami tayong kwentuhan kaysa... Ah, joke. So, yan. So, we have the formula. Percentage change in Y and small percentage change in X. So, maliit lang. Point elasticity. So, yan. When the point elasticity is greater than, less than. Hindi ko alam kasi baliktad sa inyo. So, this is my right. This is my right hand. Greater than, less than. This is my left hand. So, kung saan siya nakabuka, kung nakabuka siya sa right, Okay, this one, okay, greater than and then less than, okay? So, if the point elasticity is greater than zero, okay, shoot, 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 greater than zero, okay, y changes in the same positive or negative direction as x. Conversely, when x is less than y, less than zero, sorry, less than Less than zero, y changes in the opposite direction of changes in x. So, ibig sabihin, yung isa, um, parehas yung direction niya. Ibig sabihin, direct. Okay? Yung isa naman, opposite direction. Ibig sabihin, indirect. Okay? Point elasticity cannot be used in large scale. So, bangit ko na yun. Arc elasticity, ito. If more than 5% yung changes na kinocompute mo, arc elasticity ang gagamitin mo, okay? Uh, yun lang yung pinakaiba niya. So, it eliminates the problem deciding which end of the given range to use as a base. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, dito, pang malakihan, okay? Roman letter E. So, ganito, medyo the same lang din yung computation niya, pero large percentage change in Y naman siya. Okay? I will not be computing for arc and point elasticity as dun muna tayo sa basic ng elasticity. Okay? Yan. Some important factors. So, you have luxury or necessity goods. So, luxury goods tend to have, ito yung sinabi ko kanina, elastic demand while necessity goods have an inelastic demand. Okay, if necessity is essential goods mo siya, okay, inelastic. So, purchaser can stop buying the luxury goods when their prices rise. Ngayon, anong essential good? Laptop, cell phone. Bakit? Online class. Internet. Okay, percentage of income, big items in a budget tend to have more elastic goods than small items. For example, consumers may be affected by 1% rise or fall in the price of an apartment, yung flat, but are insensitive to, so to such fluctuations in pens. Okay? So, pag masyadong malaki yung, for example, um, dati gusto mo bumili ng, gusto mo bumili ng, let's say for example, Ford Ranger. Tapos biglang nag-spike nag yung price niya because maraming bumibili ng sasakyan ngayon, afford nila yung Ford Ranger. So, ang walang magawa si supplier kundi taasan ang price. Okay? So, nung biglang tumaas ang price, hindi mo na kaya, siya kayang gawin. Kung baga, uh, magbibihis na lang ako. O kaya mag e bike na lang ako. Kaya mag-bike na lang ako, mountain bike. Ganon. Okay? Pero kapag siya ay um... Let's say, for example, yung income mo biglang, ngayong pandemic biglang, nawalan ka ng work, okay? Nung nawalan ka ng work, ngayong pandemic, hindi mo na masyadong afford yung, uh, kung dati bumibili ka ng isang kilo ng hotdog, ngayon siguro mga 500 grams lang, ganun. Okay? Medyo sensitive yung topic kasi maraming sa atin, sa ating mga magulang, ang wala ng trabaho ngayong pandemic. And the, 
alam natin at alam kong ramdam ninyo that there were certain changes in your lifestyle because of that. Okay, this was the this is the reflection of elasticity. Okay, na yun. Didiscuss natin yung may mate. Okay, substitutes, items that can be substituted easily have a more elastic demand than those that cannot. Okay, yung madaling paltan na goods, goods sa elastic demand. Okay, for example, uh, too big, eh, sorry, Coke. Dali niyang palitan eh. Bakit? Royal Sprite. Sarsi. Uh, Pepsi Cola. Diba? O kaya, wag tayo dun sa soda. Dun tayo sa, biglang tumaas ang, ang soda drinks, pressure ng soda drinks. Ay, wag na. Hindi na ako bibili niyan. Dun na lang ako sa, ano, flavored water. <laughs> Blue. Mga ah, ganun. Ay, o kaya ay, um, tubig na lang. Okay? Yung mga, yung prices nung iyong pa, tawag din eh. Kung kayo yung umu-order ng tubig sa water purifying station, mga ganun. Okay? Yun ay, uh, you cannot be substituted. Water cannot be substituted. Okay? So, yun. Kaya mo yung substitute ng water. <clears throat> Kunwari, taas ang presyo ng ng co-substitutes niya, like Coke, Coke, uh, Chaa, yung mga ganun. Can you still substitute water with another thing? Wala. That's a base. Water is a base. Okay? So, you can say that water is the necessity and your want is just Coke, I- uh, iced tea, mga ganun. Time. The demand for product becomes more elastic the longer the time period under consideration. Ito, yung mga Lazada, 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 Shopee, Shopee, Shopee. Online, online selling. When it takes about, kumari, bibilhin ko ba o hindi? Bibilhin ko ba o hindi? Nakatulog ka na. The next day, yung parang tanong mo, bibilhin ko ba? Bibilhin ko ba o hindi? Bibilhin ko ba o hindi? You can say that it's an elastic good. Bakit? Ang tagal. Okay? So, time. Yung less time mong napag-isipan kung bibili mo ba o hindi inelastic. Okay? Pero yung mahaba yung time, yung tinititigan mo pa, binabasa mo pa yung yung, yung sa likod, sa packaging, ano yung ingredients, directions for use, ang galing, manufacturing, mga ganun. Okay? Mga ganun ay elastic. Okay? Ito nga po ang payo, it takes, uh, bago ka mag mag-add to cart sa Lazada, at mag-check out sa Lazada or sa Shopee, isipin mo muna siya ng 7 days. Pag 7 days, nagdadalawang isip ka pa rin. Alam mong siya ay elastic good. Pero kung hindi ka makatulog, the first day pa lang. Kasi alam mong kailangan, kailangan, kailangan mo. It's an inelastic good for you. Okay? So, ang payo po is 7 days. Maghihintay. So, mga check out, check out na yan. Reminder ko yun sa sarili ko. Okay? Price elasticity. So, we have discussed is, is the response of the consumers when ch- when there are changes in prices. Okay? So, hindi ko masyadong makaka-elaborate kasi ina-elaborate ko na siya kanina. The basic elasticity formula is used to compute for price elasticity. Okay? So, the same din yung uh, coefficient uh, standards niya, pag less than 1, did I include that there? Pag less than 1, that's inelastic. Pag more than 1, that's elastic. Pag 1, unitary. And, yun. Okay? Hmm. Pag perfectly inelastic, 0. Kapag perfectly elastic, infinity or mat error. Okay? So, yun. So, let's go to the substitutes and complements. Paano kapag may pang-substitute? Paano kung may complement? Sabi, the gen- in general, a direct, sh- direct relation between the price of one product and the demand for a second product holds for all substitutes. Okay? So, dito, direct relation, ibig sabihin, yung price, price ha? Price ng uh, product A, that's the main good, Versus the demand for product B. Again, price of product A and demand of product B. Yung pong pinagkukumpara natin ha. Price of product A 
and demand of product B. Sabe, the price elasticity of all substitutes are in are direct. Okay, direct relation. Ibig sabihin, when the price of product A increases, the demand for product B increases too. Okay, bakit? For example, biglang nag-increase ang presyo ng kape. From 10 pesos per sachet, naging 50 pesos per sachet. Maaring yung substitute good na tsaa, or soda, or tubig, hindi, wag tubig, kung natin isali yung tubig, tsaa, or soda, biglang humarurot pataas ang kanilang quantity demanded. Okay? Kasi, ayoko nang bumili ng kape, masyadong mahal, kung parehas din naman ang presyo ng tsaa, ng kape, sa tsaa, ng kape, sa kok-kok na lang ang bibilhin ko. <laughs> Ganun siya. Okay? Next, for complement, ito naman, kaiba price of product A price demand of product B okay sabi a price increase in one product typically leads to a reduction in demand for the other again complements are those na hindi mo magagamit yung isa nang walang yung isa you cannot use product A without product B. Ibig sabihin, when the price increase of one product typically leads to, uh, when the price increase of product A happens, okay, the demand for product B decreases. Bakit? I-analyze mo to. For example, biglang tumaas ang presyo ng CD player. CD na lang. CD. CD. Price A. Biglang Kung ikaw ay fan ng mga K-pop groups, biglang tumaas ang presyo ng lahat ng CD. Bukod pa sa laman ng CD. Ng CD mismo. Okay? For sure, kakaunti na ang bibili ng CD. Kaya, the quantity demanded of the CD player will also decrease kahit hindi nagbabago ang price niya. Gets? Kasi yung complement product niya, nagtaas ng presyo, so kakaunti yung bibili uunti din ang bibili ng CD player. Ganun siya. That's the price elasticity. Okay? So, ito, quick ano lang, income elasticity. Ang compare mo naman dito is your income. Okay? Your income naman. So, dito, um, changes in quantity demanded and changes in income. So, dito, dito natin makikita si uh, inferior good and normal good. So, computation niya. Yan. Change in quantity demanded. It's a numerator, denominator, change in income. Okay? Represented by EI. Where EI is equal to, when EI is equal to 1, unitary income elastic. Uh, EI is uh, greater than 1. The good is said to be income elastic. Okay? If it's less than 1, the good is said to be income inelastic. And remember that when EI is negative, the good is inferior good. Okay? So, I forgot to mention that when computing price elasticity, you use absolute values. Okay? Here in income elasticity, you don't need to... Uh, you also use absolute value, but you need the positive and if it... Uh, the concept of positive and negative values to know if it's an inferior good or a normal good. Pag positive daw yung lumabas, you can say that your good is a normal good. Pag negative, it's an inferior good. Okay? So, again, tatandaan po lahat yun. Okay? So, paulit-ulit ko nang sinasabi to dun sa demand. Okay? Now, when your, your income increases, malamang your lifestyle will also increase, okay? So, for normal goods, uh, when your income increases, mas dadami yung purchase mo ng normal goods kesa sa um, inferior goods. Magdi-decrease ang inferior, tataas si normal goods, okay? Kasi mas afford mo na. For normal goods, the income elasticity, a normal good is one where a percentage increase in income set is parbus causes a percentage increase in quantity demanded. Okay? Positive yung relationship niya. Pag in-increase mo yung income, 
mag increase din ang kanyang quantity demanded. Pag gano'n na nangyari, normal good po siya. Okay? May direct relationship sila. Okay? And it's positive. Next, for inferior goods, it's the other way around. Kapag tumaas yung income mo, bababa yung quantity demanded for inferior goods. Okay? You can say that they have an inverse proportion or an indirect relationship. Now, when the income increases, the the goods for the inferior goods will the demand for inferior goods will decrease. Okay? And it is negative. Okay? Next. During an economic downturn or recession which is happening right now, demand for inferior goods increase. Pansin niyo? Okay, yung yung kaya bilhin na lang Kasi biglang nawala ng trabaho, biglang may mga prices na, hindi naman masyadong ramdam, pero may mga prices na dati afford mo, pero ngayon hindi na. Okay? So, pag ganun, there is an economic recession, or, uh, economic downturn, or recession, inferior goods, the demand for inferior goods will surely increase. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, mama na ba yung fair goods, yung mga imitation products, yung mga made from, uh, yung mga, what else, yung mga okay na nakakabusog din naman, mga ganun. It's hard to say, pero ganun na nangyayari ngayon. When inferior goods have a sudden increase in demand due to an economic downturn, ang tawag po sa pangyayaring yun ay counter-cyclical. Okay, kasi hindi laging may recession. When that happens, uh, the cycle... Biglang counter-cyclical yung kanyang, kanyang uh, movement. Okay? Parang hindi siya normal. Yun. Pero it's always the case that when there's a recession, inferior goods, demand for it will increase. Okay? Pero when the, econo- the economy is growing, okay? and as elasticity is positive, May ibig sabihin, mas maraming demand for normal goods. Kasi may trabaho, mataas ang GDP, may economic boom, maganda ang ano, performance ng GDP, GNP ng bansa, recognize sa ibang bansa, maraming opportunities for work. Yun. Okay? So, mas maraming afford ang normal goods. Okay? There are two types of normal, normal goods, the non-cyclical and the cyclical. Okay? So, we have products for which zero is um, the elasticity of income is greater than 1, ah, sorry, is greater than 0, but is less than 1, okay? So, are referred to as non-cyclical normal goods because demand is relatively unaffected by changing income. So, pag ganun, may mga products na kahit, uh, kahit nagbago yung income mo, kahit tumaas, kahit bumaba, yung demand niya, parang malalang, hindi naman nagbabago. Pag ganun, ang tawag dun is non-cyclical. Okay? Normal goods. Okay? Sales of most convenience goods, such as toothpaste, candy, soda, and movie tickets account for only a small share of the consumer's overall budget. Okay? So, yun yung mga, uh, kahit magbago ang income ko, hindi naman magbabago eh. Hindi naman, kapag nagbago ang income ko, bibili ako ng sampung movie tickets sa isang buwan. Hindi. Gusto ko manood pa rin ng movie, pero hindi naman yung sampo. Netflix na lang ako. Ha, 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 ganun. Okay? Yung toothpaste naman, kung dati, hindi ko, kung tumaas naman ang income ko, Bibili ba ako ng limang toothpaste for one week? Hindi naman. Isang toothpaste lang. Kung ako lang sa bahay, eh. kung anong kami sa bahay, dalawang toothpaste. Ganun. Okay? Spending on such items tends to be relatively unaffected by changing economic conditions. Walang effect. Non-cyclical. Okay? Next, we have cyclical normal goods. This one is, it's greater than one. Okay? This is strongly affected by changing economic conditions. Like, for example, automobiles, boats, recreational vehicles, homes, yan. Uh, pansin ninyo, marami nagbebenta ng lupa at ng bahay ngayon. Why? Because kailangan nila yung income. Okay? So, ang tawag doon ay uh, cyclical normal goods. Okay? Cross elasticity, the last topic. So, cross elasticity of demand is a numerical measure of degree to which quantity demanded. So, dito, ang pinagbabangga mo is product A, product B. Magkaiba. Okay? Magkaibang product. 
this is used to determine if two goods are complements and substitutes. Okay? So, nawa na lang yung picture. Yan. If cross price elasticity, uh, if cross elasticity is negative, they are complements. Okay? When you compute, gusto mo malaman if yung si X at si Y by complements or substitute, kapag si ang lumabas sa computation mo is negative, complements po siya. Okay? Kasi yun yung discussion natin kanina, di ba? Doon sa income elasticity. Okay? If EC is positive, they are substitutes. Okay? They, they try, yung same directions lang yung quantity demanded and price. Again, ang pinagbabangga mo dito is quantity demanded. Titingnan nyo ha, kung ano yung mga variables sa numerator and denominator. Quantity demanded and the price. Okay? The higher the numerical magnitude of cross elasticity, the greater degree of complementary substitution for each each one has. Okay? So, yun. Pag masyadong malaki, okay, yung, let's say, for example, 10, 15, 20, 30, 100, 105. So, positive yung values niya. Ibig sabihin, there is a greater degree of substitution. Okay? Pero kapag ang ano niya is 1, 2, 3, 4, manong ganun, it's lower degree of substitution. It, it's also the same with complementary. Okay. Theoretically, the value of cross elasticity ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. Ang plus infinity po ay perfect substitutes. Ang minus infinity is perfect complements. You have to remember that, ha? Again, minus infinity is perfect complements and then plus infinity is for perfect substitutes. Yes! We're done! Okay, I need to really change the spelling of the questions okay so critical thinking so after all this to sum it up elasticity uh, classifications inelastic elastic okay hopefully naintindihan ninyo kahit parang lagi na lang on the spot yung pagbibigay na example okay uh, i'd like for you i'd like you to think about this if you are the manager of a company and knowing all of this, you recently discovered that your goods are considered by your consumers as inferior goods. Ano gagawin mo? Alam ko meron dyan na nag sa isip mo. Kasi this is already critical thinking. Na oo nga no, when I am put into a position where I decide whether if babagoin ko ba yung price and nalaman kong inferior goods pala ako, or nalamang kung elastic goods pala yung binebenta namin, what will I do? Knowing that ang pinoperso ng management ay, for example, is increase ng price, what will I do? You need to decide. Ano? That's managerial economics. Okay? So, that ends it for the theories. So, next video is for computations. If you have questions, Please kindly message me. Okay? Lang. Bye!